Right then, welcome back to the channel. And uh, obviously, it was a uh, three-one City in the end in the Manchester derby um, after a, a flawless start from United. I would say that first 15, 20 minutes or so, we looked like we were breaking, looked like we were getting opportunities to break. And actually, it did look at one point like we might be able to to keep pushing and get a second. And it was it was obviously going to be against the run of play. It was obviously going to be on the back foot. And it was obviously going to require us to stick to a game plan. But we go in at half time at nil nil, and you go in absolutely take that. Absolutely take that. Considering we shipped six here last year, considering the amount of shots that we have against us, which we still had, by the way, I think it was 27 shots in the end that City managed to, to put on us today. Considering all of those things, being in the fight and actually ahead at the halfway point was a lot more than I think any of us expected. All of the little group chats I was in, all all of the people I was texting, I was just saying, I think we need a second, man. We get a second and, and I'll believe. Like, I wasn't getting giddy at 1-0. I was just kind of thinking, okay, but we're not weathering a storm here. We're going to have to weather an absolute hurricane because City will come from us. And I'm not sure what changed, really, but in the second half, United weren't getting the breakaways that we were having in the first half. And when we weren't getting the breakaways... We just lost all of our opportunity to score another goal. It was relentless from City, as as I kind of expected it was going to be. I think we all sort of expected it was going to be like that, didn't we? But it was absolutely relentless. And I think United and Ten Hag deserve a lot of credit, considering the the team that was out at the end and considering... The, the state of how we've been and the criticism that this team has had and, and all those things, we actually went and we stuck to a game plan. Now, ultimately, the team wasn't good enough to do it. I mean, we was, you know, we was in the fight till Johnny Evans has gone off and then, you know, you, you're down to, I don't even know what choice of, of back line that you, you're coming up against. And I would also say, ultimately, it's not what you want to be doing going into these games. You know, you want to see United at the point where we can go and go toe-to-toe -to -toe with them. But you have to be realistic about these things and you can't sit there and say, well, we should have gone toe-to-toe -to -toe with them. Well, yeah, we did that last year and we conceded six. And we did that a little bit at Anfield last year and we conceded seven. And if you do that with Manchester City, you're going to do that because they're probably the best team in the world at the moment. You know, Obviously, that hurts to say, but it's also the truth. So we're not going to deny the truth just because it hurts. They are the best team in the world at the moment. United are not the best team in the world. I, you know, where are we? I don't know. But we're certainly not the best team in the world at the moment. So it's just completely naive and idiotic to suggest that United should be able to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with them. It's not ideal, obviously, and you want to work to the point where you can trade blows with them and you can go and put it on them on their own turf and not just play off the back foot and try and counter-attack them, which is a perfectly valid thing to do. But we're not ready to, to re joke, genuinely trade blows with them just yet and that's going to require patience it's going to require a bit of luck it's going to require some very very well identified targets in the transfer window and we're going to have to do what we can do to uh to build a better team going forward you know that's one of the major things that we're hoping in the spring is is football people in football positions to make that side of things easier. So many people put this on the manager. I mean, I saw so many people who literally in some of our scout report stuff saying, I wouldn't give Ten Hag another penny to spend. Like it's Ten Hag's fault who we've bought. You know, obviously, I think it would be right to criticise his signing of Anthony with him having worked with him and known him. I think that would be a fair one to sort of put up against him. But I think Onana signing deserves credit. He's been good. I think uh, Martinez one deserves credit by the injuries. He's been, you know, arguably his best signing. You know, there's there's been some good signings. The amount of money spent on them, it's not down to the manager. It's down to who negotiates the transfers. And you know, when you, you see so many things that have gone wrong with United down the years, it all starts with recruitment. Because it doesn't matter how good you are as a manager. You know, Alex Ferguson, we would all probably agree, everyone watching this channel should agree. He's the greatest manager that's ever lived. But 
he finished 13th with Manchester United one year. So was he the greatest manager that ever lived when he finished 13th with United? Or was he only the greatest manager that ever lived when he was winning titles? Was he still the greatest manager in English football when he had us finishing third in the mid-2000s? Behind Chelsea and was it Chelsea and Arsenal finished above us one year? No. Was he still the greatest manager of all time then? What was the difference? Well, the team that he was able to put out onto the pitch wasn't. You know, we was in a weird transitional one where we had fucking Cleberson and, and Jemba Jemba and Mikel Sylvester was playing centre half and Alan Smith and all that lot. You know, and when you look to the the two great teams that that sort of existed in between, you know, from the treble team to the 08 team, had Fergie fell off or had, had our sort of transfers and signings gone a little bit wayward? I think you all know the truth. Now, that's not to suggest any manager given time. Like, David Moyes given time doesn't become. Sir Alex Ferguson, Louis van Gaal and Jose Mourinho may not have gone on to achieve what Sir Alex Ferguson did just by getting the time. And and, and Eric Ten Hag might not you know, even win a league with Manchester United. It, it might get to that sort of stage. But the point is, recruitment is the number one. You know, and when you see, you know, Camboala's playing, Anthony's playing, you know, even the fact Maynou's playing, he's still a bit crazy. Johnny Evans playing. You know, how can you go to the best team in the world with a guy that didn't have a club at the start of the summer? And it's mad because Johnny Evans is in with a shout of our player of the year. But he didn't have a club. And that just shows you where this Manchester United side is. And some people will be calling for the manager on the back of that. I think it's incredibly short-sighted. And I think it's also, you had a puncher's chance. And we, at the halfway point, we were in the fight. We were roped open them and we were we were stalling for time and we were, we were trying to play the dark arts a little bit. But when the, the structure of the team started to come apart and it was always going to happen where they absolutely poured it on, well, you were going to be up against it and it was going to be difficult. And those things did come to pass and it was difficult and ultimately they the, all of the shots that they had they started to find a home at half time the XG was 2.73 something like that it only finished at like 3.2 they only they didn't even create another full goals worth of chances and scored three with them and people go that's why XG is a lot of bollocks it's not it's about an accumulation of chances the fact that XG ended up being 3.2 and they scored three goals yeah, it just happened. It was like with they scored three out of the last four or five shots or something like that, rather than you know whatever it was, seventeen shots in the first half. Didn't didn't find the back of the net. It went better than I thought, but inevitably, we lost the game. I don't know if there's anything to take out of that. It feels like there is. I feel like it was. Our, our most structured and disciplined performance, but we still conceded nine on 30 shots. <laughs> oh, well, let me know your thoughts in the comments anyway. We're back in the morning with five things. See you in a bit. <laughs>